Well, it's just about 10 o'clock. My name's John Wren. Uh, we're here each Friday morning for a half hour. I call it the Startup Show. So I see it's 10 o'clock. Let's get started. And uh, thanks for being with us today. You can watch this uh, via a link on johnwren.com. Uh, call to be on the show. Call Monday or Tuesday at 10 o'clock or so is usually the best time. Uh, and during the show or after, you can tweet questions about startup. Tweet to at Idea Cafe. So my name is John Wren. I've been uh, fascinated by startup for nearly 70 years. I was two years old when I moved to Loveland, Colorado with my mom and dad. And my Dad started a business, and uh, I was right by his side for the next 20 years and got an inside look at how his business started, how his friends' businesses started, and uh, I learned a lot. I say I'm a recovering MBA because a lot of what I learned in graduate business school, I've actually had to overcome to be helpful to people who are starting a new business. So... If you're starting in a new direction with your work, if you're starting a new um, career, maybe, maybe you don't want to really start a business yet. You know, if you have an idea for a business, sometimes the best way to start it is to get a job in the direction of your dreams. So if you're starting a new career, a new project or a campaign inside an existing business, it could be your business or someone else. But if you're starting something new, especially if you're starting a new business, uh, we want to make the next half hour very valuable to you. Now, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, give me a call Monday or Tuesday. We'll have you on the show with us to tell us your startup story. And then we continue the conversation from this uh, internet broadcast each Friday afternoon at 2 o'clock at Panera Bread, 13th and Grant. And it's a meeting free and open to everybody who's starting something new or who helps people who are starting something new. So you have active clients as a, a lawyer, an accountant, a consultant, and you're helping people get started. You're very welcome to come too. We do two things. We share startup experience and we do a brainstorming type technique to address specific concerns of startups. So that's each uh, Friday afternoon, two o'clock. Information on johnwren.com. There's a link to the smallbizchamber.org website. And uh, if this is all too confusing, it sometimes confuses me, give me a call. Uh, best time, Monday or Tuesday morning, about 10 o'clock. And we'll try to uh, get you to the place on the internet that might help you the most. More about that later in the show. Now, today we're going to be talking about Denver Startup Week. I've invited people to come and uh, tell me what they have gotten. I've gotten some response. And it kind of boiled down to motivation, inspiration, uh, some information, motivation, inspiration, information. And uh, people get enthused. You get 12,000 people together. It's a, a pretty exciting thing. I mean, it wouldn't fill up the Broncos stadium. What does that hold? Like uh, 80,000 or so. so. A quarter full mile high stadium that wouldn't be too exciting but you get it in the small venues and uh, the networking events and so forth that you know people get excited now my my question is does it really help startups and uh, I've got my doubts about that you know the, the problem what really helps a startup you know if you're uh, let's say you're in a position of power and control, you're watching this right now, you really want to help more people start new businesses. What would you do? Now, you know, Denver had an idea. They wanted to help startups by arranging meetings with 10 department heads that small businesses need to uh, uh, be aware of when they're starting their business. And so the startup would come in and sit down, and 10 people from uh, Denver government would tell them what they need to do. Now, what was the impact of that on uh, the rate of startup in Denver? Not very helpful. I think anyone could see that. 
you know, we do a lot of things to supposedly be helpful. Uh, classes, uh, all kinds, maybe even the stuff I do. You know, I'm, I may fall into the same trap. And so what we do is write books, give seminars, uh, do consulting to supposedly help startups. And what we end up doing is setting up a mechanism for stopping startup. It used to be that about a million new businesses a year were started in this country. It's down to about 500,000. It was about a million a year when I went to graduate business school. This was before Inc. Magazine, before Fast Company, you know, before all the other magazines that are targeting this market. And what we have now is just an overwhelming amount of information. And maybe some of it in the long run will be helpful, but I've got my doubts as far as what's going on right now. You know, I'd like to see a study that would correlate startup success with any of these programs. I have never once seen it. Uh, Babson College a couple of times has announced they were starting to compile such a study and then you never see the results. And I think that the reason for that is there's just hardly any way to, to match up any of these programs on entrepreneurship. Babson College, it's the whole college dedicated to startup. Uh, every year they're ranked number one in entrepreneurship uh, as far as the college to go to. And uh, they do a, a workshop on how to teach entrepreneurship. People go, there's the uh, Kaufman Foundation in St. Louis, and they push these things like Startup Week. So there's all this activity now around startup, and what's happened, we have fewer and fewer and fewer startups. Now, the attitude is of SCORE, SBA, the other government programs. Well, if uh, we talked them out of starting, it would not have been successful. What an arrogant statement. Can you believe anybody would actually say that? I, myself, personally, I don't think it's very hard to talk anybody out of starting. What's, what's hard is to uh, be helpful to someone that's had this idea and to help them actually get going. So I've been trying to do that very thing for the last 20 years. And if I were anybody watching this, I'd say, well, yeah, and what's happened to the rate of startup? So the national statistic is bad. 5280 Magazine has said in print in their magazine, that what I'm doing has infused Denver with an entrepreneurial spirit. I hope that's true. Uh, a lot of other things have happened. Uh, Denver's ranked now very high as far as a good place to start a business. And maybe things like Denver Startup Week have more to do with that than anything else. And I think it does create a high profile for startup, but does it actually help people get started? I'd like to know out of the 12,000 who participated, how many were there because they were thinking of starting a business and then how many actually start a business in the next year? You know, the way they register people, I think they could take a backward look and tell us that for last year if they wanted to. If they've calculated, they've not announced it that I've been able to see. And uh, it could be it's out there and I just didn't find it yet. But that's the number I'm looking for. How many people attend Denver Startup Week who are thinking of starting a new business and then how many of them actually get started. It seems to me that the Kauffman Foundation, SCORE and the SBA would want that kind of information, but maybe not. You know, when I first started talking about these things, uh, I had a, a TV show. I was doing a meeting. We ended up calling the Idea Association that uh, was really to promote the show. And... Uh, I was talking back then about the fact that, in my opinion, businesses just don't start the way the SBA says that they should, that, that they, they don't use formal market research, they don't use formal, uh, the type of comprehensive strategic planning that I was taught to do in graduate business school. It had been my observation uh, from my father, his friends, and then all my clients that I've had since then, that businesses get an idea, they go out, they do it, one thing leads to another. Now, eventually, they may tidy up with uh, written business plans. They may tidy up with some market research, but that almost never comes before the first sale. And I thought, 
you know, that's my observation, but I have not seen one piece of theoretical um, information that under would underpin that if I can't find so I went back online back then there was before the World Wide Web we had bulletin boards I went from bulletin board to bulletin board and uh, I was on I was the first business bulletin board in Denver I believe I was on uh, the University of Colorado Health Science Center had Denver Freenet and they tried to get businesses interested they couldn't but there was our idea association so I knew about uh, the uh, way bulletin boards work, and I surfed around the way you did it back then, and I came across an article that was exactly the sort of thing I was looking for. How do entrepreneurs craft their strategies uh, by a professor at Harvard Business Review? And I looked, and it was the current issue. I thought, wow, what a coincidence. One of those ways God stays anonymous, I believe. I think there was a bit of inspiration in me connecting with that particular article. I, I looked at it, and this was when it was rare. This, it's commonplace now with uh, the way the internet works now. But back then, you know, you had to wait for things to be indexed. And then maybe a year later, you could look in the index, and there's the article you were looking for. But here it was. It was on the newsstand. I, I thought I could drive over to Newsland and buy a copy of that right now. So I did and uh, read the article, and it really, really was very much along the lines of what I'd been talking about. So I continued on, and that was some 20 years ago. So I've been holding weekly workshops for startups, and uh, I went on a retreat. A priest said, you know, what you're doing seems to be helping people, but you need to take it to the next level, or when you stop doing it, it's just going to go away. So that's when I formed uh, or at least started thinking about the Small Business Chamber of Commerce and what we could do to be helpful. And, uh, you know, the Denver Startup Week, one of the problems is that startup happens every week. You know, that's why I do this every week. Somebody gets an inspiration, they can't wait for Denver Startup Week. Now, now if the message of Denver Startup Week was to talk about how, how business actually started and you really promoted it to accountants, uh, uh, lawyers, consultants, people that work with startups, I'd be all for that in the trainer experience. And maybe that's how they think of themselves. But if you look at the topics and the presenters, it's what they're teaching in graduate business school, formal market research, formal strategic planning. These business plan competitions, I think, are part of what's just killing startup in America. Business plan competitions give uh, students the wrong idea about how businesses actually get started. And what do I suggest as a replacement? Well, when buy my little book, it's on Amazon, Daring Mighty Things, the simplest way to start your first or next new business. Just, just go to Amazon and search on John Wren, Daring Mighty Things, it comes right up. It's only 99 cents in the Kindle edition, and if you invest a dollar, I'll give it back to you if you don't find the little book helpful. Uh, and, you know, give me a call. I'll refund your money. But I'm going to make you get together with me and tell me why you don't like it uh, to earn your dollar back. But very mighty thing. And what I talk about in the book is the best preparation. Because really, that's, there's four phases to start up. One is deciding that you want to start. And I believe that it probably is. Uh, better to do that sooner than later. It used to be that 80 some percent of students wanted to start their own business. It was very, very high. That's gone down, 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 down. That's one of the reasons I think things like Startup Week may not actually be a good approach, at least as it's being executed currently. Because of these surveys they do of how many people want to start their own business or it's going down instead of up. <coughs> That's a problem. So, but one of the phases is deciding you want to be in business for yourself. Then preparation. Then you get an idea, you actually start. Go out and get a customer. Then to grow your business, there's certain things that you do. You kind of shift gears. So these four phases are what I talk about in my little book. And the preparation, phase two, I think the very, very best education is a liberal arts education at a good college, if you can do it or do it on your own. You know, you've got to get education today, lifelong learning 
is absolutely mandatory, but school is optional. There are a lot of people that do this on their own. Ben Franklin did. Bill Gates did for the most part. Uh, Steve Jobs did it on his own for the most part. Peter Thiel thinks that colleges are killing startup. He, he's offering money to kids that don't go to school and instead start their own business. I've forgotten these terms and conditions, but Peter Thiel, one of the founders of uh, one of the successful internet companies, made a lot of money. And he sees the same thing that I'm seeing. And uh, Claudia Dreyfus, uh, Higher Education, question mark, there's book after book about what's happening on college campuses. And uh, where you see it most profoundly is in startup. Look around, you know, they say small business is doing better than ever. Well, the rate's down, and even that number, I believe, is inflated. I think it's guys like me in their bathrobe at the kitchen table, and they're counting those as startups because they filed certain paperwork. It's not really uh, businesses between 10 and 100 and something like a rock, you know, and that's the bedrock of this country. To 100 employees means that you have enough of a business going that you can get away and responsibility to be a good citizen and uh, as these startups go away as the businesses from 10 to 100 employees go away and big businesses grow and dominate more and more and more just look around at how many independent there are now compared to how many there are now I'm not against chains I don't think they should be restricted in any way other than in the I think there are things that happen in the marketplace that are totally unfair right now. And uh, that's why uh, we're together. Hyper low, uh, tiny little groups of people that agree with this sort of thing. And if you'd like to be a part of it, here's what I suggest that you do. Number one, take a look at nextdoor.com. Nextdoor very quickly it's a neighborhood newsletters and uh, it's a powerful powerful way to connect with your neighborhood your own neighborhood the neighborhoods we meet at the University of Denver library each Saturday Six thirty. As a matter of fact, come and join us this Saturday if you can. Six thirty. It's in the Anderson Academic Commons, which uh, used to be called the Penrose Library, but it's been totally remodeled. It's just really a phenomenal library, and uh, it's worth coming just to see the library. We're usually in current periodicals because it's sort of slow. And at six thirty, there at the library, and for an hour, we take turns. Um, Raising topics, we pick the topic at the meeting so nobody loads up. We don't want it to be a battle between competing old, dead white men, but we want it to be uh, people sharing their own thinking. So we pick the topic at the meeting. Whoever suggests the topic speaks to it first. And then we have uh, three other people picked at random to speak to it. And, and then it's a lot of fun. It really makes you think. Uh, real or doing any good or not is are, do we have, discuss a topic and then it makes you more about that topic and then you do we've got some ideas for the small business chamber that will be hyper local chamber of commerce groups I'm going to start the first one as a model here in the university neighborhood It'll be the university neighborhood, small, small business chamber of commerce. And it's small in the terms of, it's hyper-local, small business chamber of commerce. And we'd like to see a hyper-local chamber of commerce group like that in every next door neighborhood across Colorado by the uh, 2016 elections. And we're educational. We support both political parties, you know, and we see them as an important part of doing business in America today. 
it's been a, an important part of doing business in America for as long as it's been around. And uh, the Colorado Caucus is an institution uh, that's been here since 1912. And it's a powerful way for the local voice, the local person, to magnify their voice. If you want to really make a difference, participate in your local precinct caucus. And if you're already doing that, then focus on that. Do that job. But if you've gone to the sidelines because you're disgusted, if you've said, I've switched my registration to unaffiliated, maybe you've left your registration alone, but you just aren't going to participate anymore, that's who we're looking for. People that aren't involved supporting a candidate, they're not involved with their local political party anymore, or if they ever were, but they really would like to try to make a difference, and they're willing to help people understand our system. We're going to try to form these local chambers of commerce, and the project we're putting together to do that is rencollege.org. I've modestly named it Ren College for Adult Self-Directed Learning, and uh, we'll help you understand the tool of self-directed learning groups and uh, hopefully form something like a Socrates Cafe, an Idea Cafe to attract people that are interested and then invite them into a Franklin Circle there in your own neighborhood. We feel if we can, uh, there are 3,000 precincts across Colorado, if we can impact, uh, you know, half those between now and the uh, caucus in 2016, we think that the, the caucuses of the Republicans and the Democrats will revive. They've sort of been in decline for a while, and this may be our last caucus unless something happens to revive it. And we're doing this uh, virtually. You know, we don't expect this to be a group where we make some sort of statewide decision or elect any statewide people. I'm going to make available what I know, and uh, you apply it locally, and we'll see if we can make a difference together. So more about that in uh, upcoming shows. And, you know, everything I'm thinking about right now boils down to this, is that what's happened, we, you know, there used to be this saying that I think actually is pretty good, think globally, act locally. And you still hear people say that. But if you look at what's really going on, what's really going on is today we're thinking locally. You know, not in my backyard, people kind of being clannish in their neighborhood if they get together at all. You know, it's kind of everybody cocoons and then on the internet especially comes together and, and uh, it can be some pretty negative experiences on what happens online. And, uh, you know, so we, we are, are doing these things. And as far as fundraising and trying to make a difference and where our money goes, it tends to be these, these global operations. You know, we were given uh, the, the instruction by a spiritual leader to love our neighbor. And uh, also, we were given the instruction to love our enemy. And uh, Chesterton said, well, why our neighbor, why our enemy? Because so often they are the same person. You know, we live together in a small area. And I was talking about this one time, and a, a guy said, you mean that witch that lives next door to me? That's, but that's who we're being called to actually reach out and to help. And uh, how many of us do it? I certainly don't. But I'm going to try. And uh, part of it's going to be in the, the Socrates Cafe that we've got going, the Idea Cafe that I do every Friday afternoon. But the main thing is this uh, Franklin Circle that I'm forming. And uh, I want to form a couple of them, one in my own local area, the other uh, at least statewide in Colorado, maybe a broader area than that. But I'd like people that meet with me on a regular basis to try to help keep me on the right path as far as this self-directed learning. And we're going to be doing that around this rencollege.org. The first step, join nextdoor.org, nextdoor.org, become a member for your own local neighborhood, and then apply to be a faculty member, uh, rencollege.org runcollege.org. And if you'll do those two things, I'll follow up with you and try to give you help getting some local efforts started that can help you enable your members uh, there in your own neighborhood to maybe be a little bit better citizen, maybe be a little bit better small business person.
and we'll watch out for each other. You know, one of the problems that I see with nextdoor.org is uh, a friend of mine who's just, it seemed to me, maybe I was oversensitive, maybe it wasn't that bad, but uh, it seemed to me he was being unfairly criticized in the uh, university neighborhood, nextdoor.org. And so I spoke up about it, and it, you know, wasn't just defending my friend. It made me stop and think about any small business person is really subject to attack. It's one thing to go to a party and complain about poor service from some store or the bad food at some restaurant. When you put that up online with it going out to thousands of people, that can do real damage. And the uh, small business owner, unless he lives in that immediate neighborhood, never even knows it's happening. So one of the, the things that we'll be doing with this uh, hyper-local small business chambers is trying to watch out for each other. And if a business is uh, attacked, that we'll try to let them know that's happening, ask how can we make this better, get a response and post it online, and uh, try to make, and to try to be positive ourselves. One of the pledges we'll make is that we will not be now getting even critical. And I need to make that pledge myself. I'll be the first one because I've been far too critical of uh, institutions that are really, I think, mostly good-hearted people trying to do the right thing, but I just kind of see it a different way. I think the statistics bear out that the point of view that I've had, that uh, Professor Bahidi has had in the, his re research, his book is the evolution, origin and evolution of new businesses. And uh, every, if every counselor in the SBA would read it and take it to heart, things would change. The problem is best identified by uh, Edmund Phelps, Nobel Prize winning economist. He has a book called Mass Flourishing that looks at the problem of just the sharp decline of um, dynamism and uh, vitalism, the kind of thing where every employee driving to work is thinking of a better way to do their job, the way it used to be here in this country when we flourished, and now that's gone away. I think everybody would agree on that. Now, why has it gone away? And what do we do to reverse it? Well, that's what we're going to be trying to do with small business, small business chamber of commerce, hyper-local, small business chamber of commerce. We'll try to band together and um, not for political purposes, but for educational purposes to try and inform, uh, increase informed participation in the Colorado caucuses in uh, 2016 and to try to... Uh, do something to try to help small businesses. Now, we're going to be talking about this this afternoon at the Denver Idea Cafe. That's been my best effort to try to be helpful to people who are thinking of starting a new business. So if you're thinking of starting a new business, for sure, or if you work with people that are, if you're an accountant, a lawyer, a consultant, and you have clients who are starting new businesses, we'd love to have you with us. It's at 2 o'clock each Friday afternoon. Panera Bread Cafe, 13th and Grant, and uh, it's free and open to everybody. I'll have a red cap on that says Denver across the front of it, and, uh, you know, it's like jazz music. Every Friday is a little bit different, but we do two things. One is we share startup experience, and the second thing we do is use a brainstorming type technique to uh, generate new ideas. It's green light, divergent thinking. We don't analyze. We don't murder board. We uh, don't tell people they shouldn't do something. And uh, it's a lot of fun. We, if we're successful, you'll be too busy to come back the next week. That's our claim. But we want people to come anytime they need a boost or to find out about it for their clients. If you're an accountant, a lawyer, a consultant, part of why I want you to come is so that you can see what we're doing and refer clients to us if you think it would be helpful. So um, it's almost 10.30. Time goes fast when you're having fun. Uh, we've got a website, smallbizchamber.org. We're going to be totally reworking that. Watch for that sometime next week. We'll make the announcement. There'll be resources on it that you can use to, in your own neighborhood. Uh, we'll try to encourage people to become part of uh, nextdoor.org. We'll have a link on the site. Uh, and so on, but that's smallbizchamber.org, or call the number on the screen is the best one. Uh, I've got a, a cell phone, but I, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, that gets overwhelmed, but if you'll call 303-861-1447, ask for John Wren, and especially call if 
if you've started a small business and would be willing to share your experience with us here on the show, and then be with us that afternoon at the uh, Denver Idea Cafe. We'd like to have people on the show in the morning, and then uh, you can watch them online, and if you want to get more from them, come to the, uh, the live startup workshop. We'd like to get these startup workshops going across Colorado. If you'd like to lead one, I especially want to talk with you. If you want to lead a Socrates Cafe or the other groups, and these are all on our, uh, our, our website, and the, the meetings themselves are on our meetup.org site, meetup, uh, and we're small biz chamber on meetup. Facebook, all you have to do to be a member, it's free and open to everybody, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com uh, slash small.business.chamber, that's small dot business dot chamber periods or the dots small period so you uh, go there introduce yourself and your business if you want and then like and share the page and you're a member and uh, you know we've got some 7,000 people there that have liked the page and uh, they're, they're not all active members but some of them are we'd like to see that grow and this website should help us in that effort you know, we want to, what my motivation for doing this is I would like my uh, grandkids to have the same opportunity my dad did when he started. That's just not true today. We need to sort of uh, go back to the future as far as business startup is concerned. As far as I can see, we've just really gotten off track. And, you know, formal market research, formal strategic planning worked as well as uh, the SBA seems to think it, it does work. We'd have a planned economy, not a market economy. And uh, we we've have the bounty here from past efforts we need to return, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. I would like to strengthen the voice of the grassroots in business and politics. I hope you'll join me in that effort. You know, but this life is very, very short, so let's go get started. Hope to talk with you again soon. Thanks. <laughs>